Hi hey everybody, thanks a million for joining us. I'm so delighted to be joined by Emily. Emily, thanks for joining in today. Thank you, Thank you for having me. Thank you, you're very good. So Emily, as you can tell by bits of her accent, isn't from Ireland, thankfully. She's living over in the UK and she's working in musical theatre. So Emily's just going to share a bit of her background with us today from, you know, her education experience, bits of, you know, working with other people and then what she does now today and just any kind of tips and suggestions, I suppose, for anybody tuning in that, you know, maybe wanting to take a similar path or just wanting some general advice from slightly across the pond. <laughs> so Emily, we might start off with, let's say, kind of your younger years in, let's say, the initial part of school. And you might tell us a bit about how you found, you know, that transition and how you kind of got into, you know, doing bits of homework and and how was all of that for you? And you might tell us a bit as well about your, you know, learning difference and, and what category you are comfortable with putting mm. yourself into. Yeah, well, I got diagnosed with um dyslexia and dyscalculia at the age of five and then the older I got I got diagnosed with dyspraxia as well um and to be honest like I was very young I really didn't know what was going on all I know is that I was talking to a lot of special specialized teachers about what I think I was so young so I had no idea but I think the older I got the more I was like why am I being tested? Why do I keep being prodded left, right and centre? Because I was trying to figure out what's, you know, what's going on in my brain to get the best help for me. Um, and it was all down to my, like, my parents, because if they didn't put like their, well, you know, effort in to get it sorted, I probably wouldn't. Realistically, if you look at what I've got, I shouldn't be at, I shouldn't have come out of the education system. I should have just probably been just like left. Um, but because my parents pushed and pushed and pushed for the right testing, the right help, um, it got to a point where I was at a primary school where they weren't the nicest people about my my learning differences, and they made life hell for me and my and my family. Um, so I left, and. I had to move to a private school, which is basically you have to fund for yourself because it's smaller, smaller classes. Um, you get the best, like the best one to one help. Um, and more when I got to that primary school, I was very really, I was like, right, I've got these things. What's going on? I'm clearly, you know what I mean? Like you kind of click on like, oh, I've moved schools because of this. Um, and yeah, I think it very much like, I was very much like, aware and then I got to secondary school where I was put into a unit where basically it's, it's called Pacific Pacific Learning Difficulties SBLD and it's a small it's a very small group it's 10 people in this center um basically and my parent my bless my mom she was fighting for me to get in there there was like literally was like because I had three learning difficulties it's not just oh I've got dyslexia it's I've got three I've got two other learning difficulties um and yeah it you know we didn't do any spelling tests in there we didn't do anything that basically met every dyslexic's nightmare um it was very accepting and everyone was really nice um and yeah and then I kind of used what I because because when you're going to a big school I was very I used it as opportunity to basically be re at really dumb because it was the easiest way to socialise with people. When you're, you know, 13, 14, and you've got, you know, your friends do clearly way ahead of you in, you know, in, um, in the social bubble. So playing dumb was a very easy card for me. So I used to play dumb. And then when it got to college, I just got really angry about what I had. Um, I was really angry that I was like, why have I got this? I was doing, I, I don't know how many times I've done my maths GCSE. I've, I've told people how many times I've done it and I'm looking back, I don't, I don't, I can't remember the number, how many times I've done my maths GCSEs. I was forced to do it at college or else I wouldn't be able to go to college. Um, so I just got really angry. And then when I went to uni, I kind of pretended I didn't have it. I, I didn't tell anyone um, because I was a bit of shit. I was like ashamed and I didn't want to go through the whole process of being tested. Um, and then I kind they kind of figured it out in second year. They're like, what's going on? I was like, yeah, I've got this. And then 
get going down the route of actually okay I want to be I want to make a change in the education system so going through all these emotions to okay actually I want to make a change in the education system um, and make a change you know being the next kind of generation of neurodiversity because looking back I don't there was just not much for my family amazing yeah there, there's so much in that I suppose Emily you've given you've given us all the three the three school life cycles yeah and I suppose it's so interesting there that you touched on straight away which is a really important aspect is the emotion piece you know and it's something mm -hmm. that a lot of students and parents will get questions with of you know how do they manage that and how do they ride that wave with that that mm -hmm. variance between as you as you explained and in your own words about the kind of playing dumb aspect and then moving to you know the anger element and, and how you're able to you know navigate through those waves of, of trying to basically ultimately I presume fit in and, and yeah. morph into the system yeah tell me how was bits of that for you Emily do you remember like a definitive day of saying oh I'm going to act like this now so I can you know blend in a bit more or did it naturally kind of happen for you um well it was definitely at secondary school where I was in this SBLD unit and all my friends were in main school um and they, I would, it got to a point where I was just like, all oh, right, well, I don't want, like, I didn't, sometimes I just didn't understand what people were saying. And I had a support assistant in classes with me when I went into the main school. And mm. honestly, I hated it. The ladies were lovely, I, but it got to a point where I was like, right, you know what, I'm going to play this role of this person that's just being really dumb because I felt dumb so I was like right and I sometimes I had no idea what my friends were saying I misread situations because I was young and very neurodiverse at the point I'm still very neurodiverse now but I was very but it was like very heightened at that point so I got to a point where I was like oh I'll play this role and in it, it it hurt me and it hurt a lot of my you know my family until I told them um that I wasn't you know being me but it was that's how I said that's how I survived school because you, you you have to play that character until you feel like, OK, I can fit into this system. Um, but yeah. Yeah. And you mentioned there, as you said, the operative verb being survive, I suppose, really, Emily, of that kind of, you know, mm. just hanging in there. Some days you're a little bit more over the cliff than others. Yeah. And other days you're trying to, you know, hang on for dear life and you're wondering, you know, when is the gal going to blow over and and make it a bit easier and mm. and then you kind of mentioned just you moved through and you got into the college space you kind of moved into more of the the anger space what did that look like for you Emily and and what kind of helped you then kind of you know come through that because obviously you're you're in a different space now did that just yeah. take time or, or what kind of helped you with that um well, I was because I was doing musical theatre at college, so I wasn't doing math, English, history, science. I was in my element. I was in a safe place. However, the baggage from secondary school kind of went into a whole different like element, and I still was forced to do my math GCSEs. I was still. It was more like I don't. I don't know how to explain because when I was at secondary school, I had a very close um one to one support. Okay they looked after me but when I got because I was so vulnerable and then when I got to college I was literally just like left and it's not the college's fault but like the college basically gave someone who was trained in someone who's got down syndrome who looked after me. I was like I haven't got that like can you can I have someone specialized in what I've got and I got quite angry because I was like I'm don't put me in just one I've got three new I've got new don't put me in one pot and I got quite angry about that um, and I, as well as that, like the anxiety as well kind of merged because of what I had. Um, so I kind of blur, like a college is kind of like a blur for me because it was very much like I'm dealing with what I was dealing with at secondary school, went to college and then the anger, I was like, I don't want this. I don't want to have this stress from secondary school. Um, and I was like, looking back, I was like only 16. So it's just like, you have to think, right, I was actually still like a child. <laughs> yeah the angle is a, it was a um yeah but then I would go into singing class and like this is what I love um but yeah so you had a bit of a let out I suppose really because you found some aspects of your niche even though it wasn't yeah. ageily easy but at least then you were able to sing it out I suppose hopefully sing it out and dance it out <laughs> and perform in that way which must have been so you know relieving I suppose really for you Emily of being so caught in and rigid in 
a system with as you mentioned kind of English and spelling and writing and maths and then to be able to yeah to move in to that that space and did you always know that this kind of the space of the the musical theater was something you wanted to be in yeah at the age of five I was performing um and my mum and dad really pushed it like they I was that kid that used to come downstairs and perform to them when they were like we're watching Coronation Street what are you doing <laughs> Um, I was all I was always performing. I was always singing. I was always making my brother do shows with me, um, and yeah. And now I now I do it as trying to do it as professional. But um, yeah, I've always been singing. My parents always saw it as so every Saturday I would go and do that, and I wouldn't be stressing about you know my career and trying to be you know and most normal kid but yeah performing was always the outlook of just what I was you know best at and singing and yeah singing's my singing's my baby (laughs) and which is interesting because there's a a lot of obviously work and time and energy that goes into that but there's an awful lot of words you know and and learning you know really and how how do you best find that that works for you now Emily have you kind of come up with the method that you know when you're obviously faced with stuff and Mm. performing regularly you know and you have to absorb obviously a huge amount of information how how best you kind of implement or or retain that from your side you know what I'm really honest some sometimes I'm like how am I going to do this like like I had a self tape last, I think it was yeah, this year with my mum. We were doing like, it was a script. I had four days, no, like three, four days to learn the script, and it was a journey. <laughs> and like, there's ups and downs when you learn a lot of material from what you know with our just like, like our brains. So you you know what? And it sounds I just have to overwork myself until I get it. And it's that sounds like so unhealthy, but it's literally the only way. I that's for me is to just get it in your brain Uh, but as as soon as it's locked in it never leaves as soon as as soon as that information is locked in I it will never leave me um so it kind of pays off um it's like I had an audition last week where I had to learn a song and I was like I have to probably take a couple of days off work Mm. which is fine but I'd rather know the material and work to get it done um but yeah that's what I do I just have to overwork but then it, it pays off as soon as it's locked in <laughs> and and it, that's fascinating I suppose really the dilemmas and challenges that come with that Emily and mm. and like do you when you say you over you know work it or you overdo it do you kind of like let's say write it out do you obviously you can perform it and sing it as well but what mm. is kind of the best method for you to to retain it so I found a new strategy uh, while well learning this script a couple of months ago is where you write the first letter of each word and then you basically so for example like the cat sat on the mat you write cat sat s so c s mat and then as soon as you learn <laughs> and then you learn that's how I learn it so then I remember the first letter of the words it's a weird yeah it's a weird thing of doing it but you basically remember the first letter and it's like oh yeah that goes with that and goes with that and with singing it's very much just constantly listening to the song and printing off the basically visualize everything print all the sheet music um and go through everything and color code everything and just yeah it's weird (laughs) yeah that's a fascinating way yeah definitely i've I've been kind of isolating the letters so at the start of each word you know and then trying to learn it in that format and you know there's obviously loads of kids you know maybe aspire thankfully <laughs> to to be what you're doing yeah. or you know even some element of performance or you know drama or poetry and, and that might be a useful mm. strategy for for anybody watching you know to try it because we're always looking for alternative ways listen we're also creative when we have different challenges faced with us that everybody finds their own niche and you mentioned yeah. the colors as well too Emily which is is fabulous you know some people over color though so it's like looking at like a rainbow of numbers yeah. and letters <laughs> So majorly suggest that because I think that's a bit distracting, but definitely some element of colour yeah. does help, obviously, from staring at a blank, boring page. Yes. And then there's the performance piece, Emily, I suppose, which is a separate strand. So you have all the obviously learning and going through from the material, and then you have the, you know, I won't even say more complicated, but you would then another complicated step two, let's say, of obviously yeah. illustrating it and performing it, and presume obviously at auditions, and then actually. Yeah on stage and in front of people and do you 
I suppose relish in that or is that often a bit of oh my god am I gonna you know remember all of these lines <laughs> um I think when I went to uni I kind of hit a nervous block where I used to forget words and I never used to I never used to forget any words and then I got to a point where I was overworking so I'd over worry so like just the worst thing you could do is like before you go on stage is look at the words because you'll go on like oh god what, what was that like you would panic but um I've been getting so much better at remembering but all I say is just remember you're like you're in the element um stage is as soon as like, it's weird as soon as I'm on the stage it just have like it clicks um it says it worries my mum bless her she goes like I just honestly the put the lead up to you getting on the stage worries me but as soon as you're on there as soon as the day you're fine because that's this is what I love amazing so do you feel let's say when you're kind of just before you go on or when you're on that there's more ease then for you is it just is it more you know that it kind of comes to you in in that space yeah I think it's just the lead up as soon as I'm on it on the stage I'm fine it's weird exactly. <laughs> and then after I suppose Emily like how do you find the aftermath because often that can you know you get the kind of high and then you're like oh my god you know it could either be the exhaustion or mm. the build up and then there's the kind of bit of a critic then of like why did I have to you know worry so much about it it all went yeah. fine how do you how do you manage that and I suppose criticism as well for mothers maybe at times that you know yeah. watch how do you kind of you know how do you navigate through that yourself I'm my worst critic I am lit I can't watch anything back of me performing you would have thought like, why is it you love performing why would you not hate it um I'm my worst cricket critic um so as soon as I'm off the stage, I'm like, right, it's over and done with. And people are like, oh, like, like congratulate you or whatever. And I'm like, thank you. But they're like, oh, do you want to see it? And I'm like, no, <laughs> I don't want to see it at all. I hate watching myself back. Um, but yeah, there's, I had an audition the other day where I literally was worrying for like 20, I was so worried. I was, I was doing just back and forth, worrying, going through it. I, I walked into the audition room and walked out. I was like, what was I worried about? It literally was five minutes. Um, but yeah, it's, soon I, I think that's something I need to work on is just don't panic because <laughs> everything happens. I think we all need to work on with that the the panic element and that's interesting I suppose really from from those words Emily of the panic versus the anxiety side and, and maybe something you can kind of touch on because it's you know it's I suppose it, there's so much media now and there's so much drawn to overall let's yeah. say general anxiety and it's definitely been heightened and we won't get into mm. all the details COVID and everything else but yeah, you know yeah. there there is an awful lot of let's say anxiousness around and I suppose there there definitely needs to be a you know more recognition on a different box of panic because a panic is is, is often way more heightened yeah. than than general anxiety and from your side Emily do you feel like you you go through spaces of more let's say general anxiety or do you feel definitely there's element mm. of, of that panic too where it's you know just a bit more challenging yeah someone who I, I'm very open I'm someone who do, deals with anxiety because of the neurodiversity anxiety compared to panic so different it's like panic for me is sudden and the sweat like I sweat or like I over like I worry it's like um I'm trying to think of a day like the other day when I was at work or something I don't know like it's just con like maybe on the tube tube whatever and I've missed my stop that's the panic of like oh my gosh okay I've got to rewire something and figure something out the anxiety is maybe not looking at my bank account because I'm worried about how much I've got in there um right like, like you know um figuring out what I'm going to wear tomorrow so everything sorted that anxiety like the, the new life panic is very much like height so much heightened and it can go you can go from zero to 100 so quickly and it's so scary but, but yeah I think a lot of people think with, especially with what's going on you know with social media anxiety is just like labeled one thing for me it's too two different two different things definitely and, and for me as well and for, for an awful lot of other people obviously in that bracket but you know even if they don't have a different way of learning you know obviously people can experience anxiety or panic and it's important yeah. I suppose for their more like to be shed around the yeah. link between learning differences and you know mental health challenges or whatever way you want to label it because yeah. it's you know it is it is tied you know when you're in a system which I think not a lot of people get obviously you know yeah. if they, they don't maybe have a similar experience or haven't seen it when you're in a system for so long and you're 
you know, constantly going in there for seven, eight hours a day. And it's yeah. not always going in your favor <laughs> yeah. um, till you're 18. It's it's a lot, you know, that your brain is exposed to when your brain is forming. So, you know, it's, mm. it's quite malleable. And then you're going into an environment that that is challenging. Yeah. I suppose just on the panic side, just something that I want to share from personal experience of what I find useful. Yeah. So there's a particular program. So I went to everything and anything to try and help with my own panic attacks that I experienced kind of as teenage years and then all the way through my own university um, mm-hmm. level. And there is um, a program, it's called DARE. So it's D-A-R-E. Now it's just important to know from a, our Irish listeners that it's not the, let's say, access to education route. So we have a program here in, in Ireland that, you know, helps students with different ways of learning get into to university. And that's yes. also called DARE. Mm-hmm. This is a very different program, uh, even though it is set up by an Irish guy who, fascinating, Enough, um, I discovered a bit about when I was in college that he was actually in college a long time ago and experienced, you know, panic of going into lectures and, you know, just overwhelm and too many oh. people. And, you know, basically then over time wanted to figure it out because his life came very debilitating and quite sh- small. Um, his name is Barry McDonough, I'm a huge fan of his work. Um, but basically, when I was going through bits of this, I came across this particular program. Um, it's the easiest book I've ever read, which is really, really great from a dyslexic point of view. It's shiny very clear fabulous font the line spacing like small yes. has pictures oh it was just a dream it had a lovely feel as well so there was a sensory like texture aspect but there's another side obviously there's audiobooks as well if, if people are really adverse to that but I think it's probably the only but a book I read start to finish out for, for a long long time shamely enough to say but it just came up with very useful things to deal with in the moment. So it's mm. um, each letter stands for something. So it's diffuse, accept, um, run towards and engage. And he goes through very simple strategies of when you're in the moment, as mm. you kind of mentioned, Emily, of the heightened panic, because it can only get worse, actually, before it dissipates yeah. as to how you kind of manage it. And it just might be something of interest to, to yeah, people definitely. or you know listeners he he did a very um good let's say audio series as well that um often I found it very difficult definitely being in a lecture or you know facing exams and I kind of put it had him on my phone and he does the 60 second audio when you're actually having a, a panic attack which was vital because he you know obviously yeah. been through all the things so he knew all the things to say to you about you know kind of moving through it and you know it's going to get worse now and all that stuff and it was fascinating you know when you're listening to it when Mm. you're feeling it it really resonated an awful lot more with obviously somebody that had been through the experience and Mm. and knew what they're talking about so everybody maybe find their own way for me that was life-changing definitely kind of you know set me back on a path I'm not saying my panic attacks are fully ever gone (laughs) but they're an awful lot more manageable you know yeah it's about I suppose finding strategies and and Emily when you're kind of having those moments or you know when when there's different things arise for you what are the things that that help you or what are the things that that you kind of lean on that that help make your life a bit easier um I always I always always say to myself um you're in a safe place you're like you know everything's going to be okay um I just let it I don't because I've basically I've had hit I've had hypnotherapy basically um which has been a godsend because oh, I can't like there's some bits I really can't remember from my past because being in the education system which is great um but as an adult it doesn't you deal with other things you deal with mm-hmm. other worries as well not just you know as a teenager um I just basically I just I have to just focus um and just stay in that kind of focus element and not freak out more um but there's been so there's been situations since I've been moving like I, I work in a job where I have to count like there's a lot of like numbers and there's a lot of speech and there's a lot of and it's it's horrible but there's there's good days and bad days and that's how I see it it's like when I'm I probably like text my mate like oh wait, I've already you know fell off my bed it's a, it's a bad new and adverse day um and I think I have it's weirdly like I just have to go through it and accept it um and I get like really bad migraines because of my I'm over I overwork my brain sometimes when I just should tell myself to just stop um and I think I I for me is I over I, I don't like to be what's it called like label like I don't like no this is not going to stop me doing stuff I'm going to keep going but actually it's worse for me <laughs> because mm-hmm. I end up panicking or overworking or getting a headache um 
and yeah I yeah it's just one of those things that I just have to just focus on it's a it's a balancing act isn't it and I yeah. don't know where I actually you know despise it's that word at times because I don't actually know do we ever necessarily mm. majorly get balanced because we're in school and we're working so we're never ever going to get the same amount of rest time as we do work time yeah so I think that the whole balance myth is a bit kind of yeah. you know wrongly positioned but it's yeah. it's I, I suppose interesting and, and challenging also to hear you know and I'm very much resonating with as well how you know you move through and it's that constant determination and drive element yeah. and it's I suppose recognizing then at what cost do we do those things to yeah. ourselves you know and it's it, yeah. you get to a stage and I, I, I'm i sure Emily maybe you move through when the education space where you know those things become so important I myself mm-hmm. was just so ingrained in well you know doing the best that I can in school yeah. and in college and then realizing obviously as I've gotten older what toll that took on me yeah. mentally and physically and and my wellness side and I, I suppose interesting I you know it came up this morning when I was doing bits of my own personal time and reading some you know motivational quotes it was like rest is also still progress you know mm. and it's it's important to recognize that we need that to keep doing all of the going yeah. stuff um and it's it's very difficult you know it's not something at all that I will remotely say I've mastered um and it's it's mm. very challenging so I, I really get where you're coming from really because it's something that I struggle with on a, yeah. on a daily basis actually yeah. you know let's fit it all in and let's you know keep going and let's do what everybody else does and then realizing oh you know I'm then worn out you know yes. and, and when's enough enough Really, you know, and yeah, the worn out I get like you can really feel it when I've done so. I do like eight shows a week where I work. Um, so that's Tuesday. So I have only one day off, so Tuesday, Wednesday, double show Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, double show Saturday, Sunday, half a single show. And you get burnt out from what our brains doing a lot, like you know, counting and talking and writing and just constant non stop it's you, you have to accept maybe take two days off instead of one day off because you will be our brains will burn out because mm-hmm. we work 10 times faster than everyone else does because we have to keep going mm-hmm. and I think I've had to accept that I'm like okay maybe I'm I'm not I'm not like everyone else but I will have to take a step back yeah yeah and it's 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 that you know it's, it's that kind of realization at times of like oh yeah this this is why you know we're mm. like you know you get that kind of like eureka moment I actually remember it only a few days ago I was like oh yeah I kind of forgot that I was a sex thing <laughs> you know I have days like that yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I had bits of like you know because obviously we work so much so I obviously work with so much with kids and people with different ways of learning and you know I'm constantly now trying to I suppose help them and, and change which the the education system and stuff over here and then I, the other day it was really like I had forgotten that you know I was kind of in that that, yeah. that box too you know you get kind of caught really yeah. I think is the best way that I can describe it you are caught in the doing and the going and mm. the fitting in and trying to keep up and, and keep the show on the go literally for you yeah um, always <laughs> and you know, it, it's really about trying to, yeah, I don't ease the balance again, but it's, it's you know, that kind of yeah. solace versus versus constant going, really. You know, I get the forgetting you're dyslexic. I get that because it, like, there's moments like, yeah, I don't really feel it. And then I'm like, oh, gosh, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> but yeah, I get that. I forget that I'm sometimes you're diverse, but then it hits you like a truck. <laughs> yeah, it's it's interesting, isn't it, that you as especially as you get a kind of, you know, move through maybe and come out of the education system a bit more, then you're not maybe as not that you're not exposed to it, but it isn't kind of something mm. that you need to maybe illustrate regularly or, you know, you're not kind of always telling people about it or, you know, even mm. if you're not, it's something maybe that you just face with differently as an adult, I suppose. And it's and that yeah. transition, I suppose on that point as well, Amy, which is important when you moved from, let's say, education into, let's say, the working space, yeah. you know, how how was that as a as a transition anyway for you? And, and how do you find you know moving through transitions because that's actually a regular occurrence I know 
right now let's say in the next while and, and the last while kids are go, you know going back to school and there's always yeah. that kind of transition and that piece and mm. get a lot of questions all the time of they find it really difficult with change and, and yeah. transitions and mm. for me a big one was definitely from education to work but but yeah. how did how did you find that um I think it's a lot of trial and error mm. I did a lot of trial and error and like you know pretending that I wasn't neurodiverse was one thing because I was like yeah like if I don't say it if I don't say to the employer I'm not and then they figure out that I've given out the wrong change (laughs) they're like um you know explain this and I was like and I've you know I I've learned to embrace it and that's what I'm doing now is to just basically put it on my sleeve and be like this is what I've got um I think the education system to adulthood is a whole different ball game. I think mm-hmm. because you're so much aware about what you do and about so much aware what people see of you. Um, so like you're not normal. Like my, from what I remember, my family did a lot of carrying me during the education system and fighting a lot of my battles for me. Um, and they did as much as they can to protect me from when I get into adulthood, the realistic side. But from be- working in retail to working all sorts of different jobs. I've kind of just figured that you just need to do what's best for you um, mm. and not everyone's going to like that because everyone's brains aren't wired like our brains where we think outside the box we are very time def- like efficient we have to you know we've got we've got things laid out for us and I think society really needs to understand that we have things placed for us and dyslexia and wh- whatever you know you've got we we're not it's not really taught, let's be honest like it's not talked about like no one knows really how dyslexia works mm-hmm. and like they're like oh like yeah you can't read or write like the best mm-hmm. one I got was oh you don't look dyslexic and it's just like what <laughs> it's like sorry I forgot to that's not third. even laughable but I suppose we can laugh about it because yeah. we know but it's like just, it's just like sorry I forgot to put my third eye on today like it's, wow. it's just it's baffling but I think it's a lot of just patience and understanding and yeah and I think it's a lot of pill like a hard pill to swallow is people society has imprinted what dyslexia is like and it's gonna be so and it's gonna take a lot for you you and I to do you know make that change into how you know society views it and I think change I going like from school to you know college just I think for because my mom just did like con like chatting to me and by like the saying because for me going into like school to college I was like yeah it's gonna be so much better like college is gonna be so great and she's like like it's like yeah it's not <laughs> the grass is never green on the other side and like mm-hmm. I think I think honesty is the best the honesty is the best way um because and then going into adulthood just be honest with people and if they don't like it they don't like it <laughs> Definitely. I suppose there's, there's loads in that, Emily, that we can address, but I suppose the, the underlying thing you were mentioning is, is doing what you can, let's say, to, you know, stay true to yourself, which is very important and, and figuring out that where that is, because obviously, you know, when you're at that age, it's still young, you're still not sure. I'm still not sure. Yeah, <laughs> you know, I'm so, sure. Yeah, so it's, it's about kind of, you know, going with that uncertainty as well at times which you know is very challenging for all of us regardless of whether you've different ways of learning or not but definitely that that move through from from school and different schools you mentioned they in that transitions as well that you've been through I've been through similar ones but then into the working space and and how you kind of navigate that is definitely mm. something that that would benefit a lot of people you know to to have a bit more of a of a structure or a an insight into yeah. that as you mentioned not sugarcoating things that everybody thinks oh it's going to be great when you, I was told after college she'll be great now when you go start working because you won't have to do any of the exams like or any of the projects and that's that's good but you're yeah. faced with a different set of dilemmas you know yeah. you're faced with you know constant emails or, or writing or taking notes and meetings or different deadlines you know mm. so it's it's just different strengths and different challenges that you're faced with it's not saying that any of them are you know amazing mm. and I think often that's where it's pinpointed as as you know when you move to the next school this will be great and then when you yeah. move to the next place so it's like this chasing of oh we'll eventually get there but actually it's something that you just 
you know it's, it's an ongoing thing really and, yeah. and like the quicker we can all kind of come to terms with that this is here to stay unless we you know mm. eradicate it as some, as some magically issue. <laughs> take a tablet and we're sorted exactly yeah or find some way of manifesting it through yeah. um you know it's 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 kind of that that handhold piece really but Emily there was there was so much wealth of information there thank you so much is there anything else you'd like to finish up with or, or share or anything that we didn't touch on that you know you'd like to impact upon I think I'm all good I think I think I've shared, <laughs> shared we've loads yeah we've loads there about just trying to you know manage things a bit differently and very useful tip as well for people to try about the the letters and the sentence and yes you can replay it because I won't be able to say it in sequence <laughs> but that that's a very interesting one I must try that myself next time I'm learning something off um but thank you so much Emily for joining us and um, thanks everybody for tuning in if they'd like to find any more information obviously dyslexia awareness month we've lots of booklets and videos coming up and feel free to check out our website or um, sign up to our list and get access to more free material Thanks a million and we'll see you on our next video. Bye.